All right, I am here. Lake Crowley, Whiskey Bay Dry Camp. It's a Wednesday morning. And as you can see, no one here yet, not until the weekend at least. But water levels seem decent. About the same as it was last year. So today, I'm just going to focus on maybe Sacramento perch. I'm not going to go all the way to the other side of the lake. I'm going to focus my efforts around here. I know that there are perch here. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to launch my yak. Tent's already set up. I just need to launch and head out there. All right, let me show you my setup for today. Since really my focus is on Sacramento perch. I've been using this. Well, I have a new rod and reel combo here. So this is the Shimano Calcutta BFS HG. Look at this beautiful reel, it's the Conquest. Look how tiny this thing is, it's perfect for fresh water. Now BFS stands for Bait Finesse System. So this reel was designed to throw super light lures like mini jigs I'm using today, uh, 1 8, 1 16th, really super small lures and it's mounted on this Phoenix Ultra MBX Classic. Oh, the cool th One of the cool things about this particular reel, check it out, I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear it, but when a fish starts pulling on the drag, this is this. Hear that? It clicks. It's really cool. So you get a notification if you're not paying attention and this a big fish starts running off with your lure, you'll hear it. Kind of like uh, similar to what you see on conventional reels, on the big saltwater conventional reels. But yeah, look how this thing just fits in my hand. Now this is the lefty model. You know I fish left-handed and um, it's the perfect size. It's just great for um, casting super light lures. But yeah, I'll put a link in the description if you're curious about this setup. Oh, this particular reel is only sold in Japan. So you'll have to go to, uh, I use a site called uh, Digitaka or Digicata.com and you can get it from them. But super high quality reel here. Bite. Yeah, that's a Sacramento perch, baby. First fish of the day. Biggest one yet. All right. Second one to perch. Bigger than the one from yesterday. It's a fatty. Ooh, this one is fat. So if you're not catching Sacramento perch in the weed lines or if it's really slow, another tactic to try is fishing just outside of the weed line, along the edge of it, or a little further out. Okay, 
Okay, so you cast out your mini jig, and then you just let it sink a little bit of the bottom. Just let it sink, and then just start going in reverse. This is my reverse troll. I caught my last two fish this way, occasionally jigging it like this. Who said that the eastern sierras aren't beautiful? Check out the view. Dang, the water is so clear. Alright guys, it is Friday, day three, over here at Convict the Lake. Fishing with Kevin over there. And look at how clear this water is. Holy cow. Beautiful lake. And as you can see in the morning, no wind. Oh, serious? Yeah. Start casting, dude. It's time. Alright, I'm gonna throw out a line. Check out how deep this lake is. It's over 100 feet. I can't believe how deep this lake goes. Yep, it is beautiful. Wow, it goes from really shallow to a steep drop off. There's another boat right there. Check out the size of the lure that I'm using. So these little tiny lure Jensen's. Uh, like a little gold cast master. It's probably the smallest one that they make and with this reel I could cast it a mile. Check it out. And I mean it's got to be less than a quarter ounce and it just uh, I want it to sink a bit because that's where most of the fish are hanging out and it's so sensitive it just no matter how light the lure is it will still pull line off of the reel and again because of the size i could just palm it really comfortable reel to use okay now i'm trolling 86 feet of water I'm seeing fish jumping on the surface I'm starting to think if i should start yeah, maybe I should start using some dry flies out here. They're feeding off the surface. Look how skinny. little guy on a night crawler and then he swam right into my anchor I didn't even know he was there when I pulled my anchor up boom he was there so first trial of the day is really small but hey it counts a little rainbow all right the wind is starting to pick up a bit so we're gonna head back grab an early lunch and then we're gonna try a new lake so, uh, according to, um, we have, there are a couple fishermen that are camping right next to us. They're saying that some of these lakes in the afternoon don't get windy at all. So we're going to try one of those lakes. 
So this one in Crowley, beginning at noon, it's gonna get super, super windy. So it's an eight mile drive up this narrow winding trail to get up to Rock Creek Lake. Elevation is 9,700 feet, so almost 10,000 feet. Compare that to Lake Crowley, which is only at 6,700 feet. So the weather is actually colder up here. And most importantly, it's less windy in the afternoon. So we could actually fish this lake without the problems that we face on Lake Crowley, which boy, when the wind picks up there, it's very difficult to get around on your kayak. So here we're heading up to Rock Creek Lake in the afternoon. Check it out, Rock Creek goes to 99 feet. It's like it's pretty deep as well. Here I'm casting out a mice tail on my spinning rod. I'm using a chartreuse power egg on a cheese power worm. Because the water is so deep, I'm just letting it sink all the way to the bottom and then I'm letting the wind drift to put some action on that mouse tail. And then on my other rod here, I'm just casting out mini jigs. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's small. On what, high crawler? On a yellow and white hookup. At this point the wind really started to pick up and it actually got chilly so I threw on a jacket but again even though it was windy it was not nearly as bad as like Crowley where you could get hit by powerful gusts of wind. And on top of that, at Lake Crowley, it gets quite hot. Up here, although it is a little windy, it's much cooler. So we were able to fish much longer on our kayaks. Yeah. 
Yep, they're here. Yep, they are here. I'm only using a three pound test, so you need to be careful. Focus on the reeds, on the weeds here, dude. That's where they are. Another tiny one. Bluegill size. Alright, because these mini jigs are so tiny, they take forever to hit the bottom. I had a little tiny split shot on top to speed up the uh, the descent. And of course I always tip it off with the night crawler. Same rig, I'm gonna cast it into this fishing hole. How long it takes to land on it. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I think your pole doesn't have enough backbone to set the hook. Oh. Maybe that's it. There we go. Yep, they're still there. Hey. Is that and you know what? I might keep this one. Since they're not getting any bigger. Alright, these are mini jigs with tipped with a night crawler. I'm just gonna cast it in one of these holes surrounded by grass. I like this spot because the weeds are just below the surface so it doesn't tangle up my prop. Right now I'm just dropping the two bait straight down to the bottom and then I start jigging it. I do a slight retrieve and if nothing strikes I'll drop the two bait straight back down to the bottom and start jigging and retrieving slowly up again. So you want to try to stay in one area for a few minutes at a time. You don't want to drift over these weeds because you'll just get tangled up. So that's one of the benefits of having a pedal drive. You could stay in one spot without drifting too far away. You'll find these perch all over these weeds. So you don't want to anchor down. You just want to stay in one place for a few minutes and then move on. Let the drift carry you and try different parts of the water and eventually you will start landing fish. There you go, fish on. Another well, he's bigger than the other ones, but still small. All right, so I'm just taking the mini jig here, tipping it off with the worm. And then casting it into the fishing hole. There's a nice little person all right here. There we go. It's shown. Oh yeah, this is slightly better. I'm going to keep this one. Alright, this 
what I was talking about as far as water quality. Check it out. This is a uh, Lake Crowley. I'm gonna dunk it so that you can see the the kelp or the grass that they these perch hang out in. So this is how it went pretty much all day long. We were catching perch left and right. I lost count after a while. I estimate that I landed over 25 fish. I only kept 13, including some of these smaller ones because Kevin wanted to do a fish fry later. But if you focused your efforts into the deeper water, especially by perch flats or the northern part of the lake, the Sacramento perch get much larger out there but we had a great time fishing this day so here are a couple of pictures of my stringer from this productive day of fishing for sacramento perch so here i'm leaving lake crowley and here's one final look at the signage here for crowley fish camp Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing to OC Outdoorsman. And if you would, give this video a thumbs up. It would really help out the channel. Thanks again.